Hello and welcome back. The adventure is about to begin. Well, actually, the adventure's begun. I'm heading off from Ipswich on the east coast of England all the way down to the Sahara Desert, Morocco. That's my aim. On the way down, I'm going to take the ferry from Portsmouth on the south coast of England all the way down to Santander on the north coast of Spain. From there, I'll ride all the way down from northern Spain to southern Spain, get a ferry somewhere in southern Spain or Gibraltar, down to Morocco through the Atlas Mountains and then into the Sahara. On the way back up, instead of getting the long ferry from Portsmouth to Santander, I'll ride the whole way back and just get a ferry for the final bit from Calais to Dover to see the difference it makes. I've done the first, I think I've been riding for about three hours or so, absolutely freezing. You can see my Bonneville just parked up there. We've got a couple of English riders and a few French riders too. Cold, wet. I forgot my waterproof trousers, so my shoes and my trousers are just completely soaked through. I brought one waterproof, but really I think as soon as I get into Spain, I'm going to be sweltering hot because I've heard it's a bit of a heat wave at the moment. So Bonneville's parked up there. Just very simple, two panniers and a bag attached. I don't have any backpack or anything like that. I'm giving myself about 12 days to complete this down to the Atlas Mountains, enjoy and explore Morocco, and then hopefully meet Monica, my partner, in Barcelona in about 12 days' time. You can see all of the bikers just pulling up now. In fact, these are all on British plates. Hello. So everyone has got similar ideas. I've heard this is a really, really popular route for bikers to completely bypass all of France and just get into Spain where you've got the warm weather. So they are just starting to pile in now. Cannot wait to see what the, what the feeling's like. So I've done the, the Tenerife Ferry a couple of times before. Very, very curious to see what this one's like. Right. I'll show you a few of the bikes that are lined up. You've got a Belgium Ducati. This, this is surprising to see. So someone's got a British, what would that be, Lambretta or Vespa, that's heading down to, heading down to Spain. Luggage set up on the back and then, don't blame them, bit of extra comfort on the seat, but that is fully loaded. Then that is a, almost didn't recognize it, Triumph Tiger Sport 1050 BMW. These are all British, Kawasaki, another Ducati, BMW GS, fully loaded with all of the pannier gears and the Lone Rider stuff on the front there. I was just chatting to the owner of this black Honda Pan European 1300. He's had this one since new. He's also got a Harley Davidson Pan America, but he favors this for touring. He says it's a phenomenal bike. Massive amount of luggage he's got on there as well. You can see everyone's got stickers on the front. So you're given these stickers and you have to put them on the front of the bike so they know where you're situated, I think, in the hold area. Again, another Honda, that's a Honda 600. This is another Honda Pan European, I think. I think this is the 1300 as well. But these guys here, at least the three of them, they're all in the same group heading down to Spain. My bike, of course, great to see a Himalayan with the Royal Enfield panniers either side. That's just a two-year-old one. And then at the front, there are four, one, two, three, four, four French bikes. Big BMW, Ducati there, another BMW and another Ducati. So they're the French ones at the front. They're some serious machines. That is a lot of euros worth of motorbikes here for the French guys. Wow.
stunning, isn't it? Really, really beautiful. It's a shame it's a picture, but, but that is much, much prettier than what's upstairs because I've just had breakfast seriously overcast at the moment. It's 11 o'clock now, the following morning, and we've been sailing for about 12, 13, 13 and a half hours or so. I had a one and a half hour breakfast with Ian, who was the gentleman ahead of me on the Himalayan. He's got a one-way ticket with no plans on how long he'll be away for and no idea where he's heading. When he gets off at the port of Santander, he doesn't even know where he's going to put onto the sat-nav. And he's not 100% sure that he's even going to stay in the continent of Europe. He's turning off motorways and just picking every day where he's going to head to. So Ian, if you're watching, I wish you the best of luck on your trip. Let me now break down the costs of the ferry over from Portsmouth in England to Santander in Spain. It's about £290 to get myself and my bike on the ferry, but I think this price can be reduced if you book far enough in advance. I just booked two days ahead to give you an example. This swim is technically a four berth, but this was £138. You can see they've just laid out one bed for me, but in theory, four people can be in this room, and I guess that would significantly save costs. But the first ever sailing of this ship, Brittany Ferries, was March 2023. So that means it's just two months old. And my Lord, you can tell, this is one of the nicest ships I've been on. Everything is immaculate, beautifully appointed and works perfectly. I'll do a full tour of my little apartment room and also the ship now because I can tell the time's going to fly. We've got around about 23, 23, 21 hours, I should say, left of sailing. And I'm looking forward to every second of it. That's the difference having a cabin makes and being on a nice ship makes. It turns what could be an arduous journey into something really, really pleasurable. I've had to squeeze into the corner just to get as much of the room in here as possible. At the entrance, you've got space for hanging your clothes. Squeeze the bags in at the bottom. Clothes hangers, ladder for the beds, little shelf, full length mirror. This is such a nice surprise, a proper fully functioning smart TV. British channels, French channels, radio, on demand, and a selection of films as well. It's brilliant. Little desk with a chair and a really well-functioning wet room. Everything, the shower pressure, lighting, cleanliness, on point. It's a really nice bathroom. With the sleeping area, Again, sleeps four, and you could save massive money if you split this room between two, three, or four people. And finally, a little shelf there with some outputs. I'll start the ship tour from the outside because we've been going past these islands for the past 30 minutes or so. I need to download some or get some Wi-Fi and figure out exactly where we are because I didn't expect to see land both sides of us. It's quite interesting. And you can see how much the weather's cleared up now. It's getting warmer noticeably and the clouds are making way for not blue sky, but definitely hazier weather. Coming through to the inside of the ship. I think there's a, a presentation going on somewhere here about this Orca charity. Plenty of seating here, and I think good Wi-Fi because there are a lot of people who are working, and you can tell it's popular for bikers because on a lot of the screens, super bikes are currently on. Coming through reception here. And, oh, this is shut at the moment, I think, but this is the shop. So that's the shop area that's just about to close. 
they can choose to upgrade your room, which I was just having a look at out of curiosity. £404, I think, for the deluxe room with a balcony, which looks incredible. Again, more of the super bikes on. And this is the lounge area, much more popular, much more popular area here. In fact, I didn't expect it to be quite so busy. Coffee shop, bar, and coming through here to the back. It turned out to be just cabins at the back of the ship, so I thought I'd stop filming. We're going towards much, much choppier weather now. It looks like we're going into a little bit of a storm. This is the terrace area on the other side of the ship. I won't get too close in case the camera blows out of my hand. But you're allowed to walk your dogs here. So I've seen plenty of people playing with their dogs, walking their dogs on this little section of the ship. It's lunchtime now. I've just heard the announcement. So I'm going to run inside, grab a bit of lunch, and then maybe read a bit of a book in the afternoon. I didn't account for this. It's 8 p.m. I need to go for dinner. I booked a table. And I've been seasick for eight, nine hours, just pretty much bedridden. You won't be able to see it on the camera. And I'm sure most people are fine, I'm sure. I don't know why I've got seasick this time, but just a constant swaying like that. God, I feel awful. I feel like I've got a, a dreadful, dreadful hangover. All I can do is lie down anything apart from that and it's just too unpleasant have to try and take two paracetamol to see if that helps it's a shame because i want to have a wander around see the view but oh, i feel like i could throw up at any minute at least there's only 15 hours left problem is i get off at eight o'clock and I really want to feel fresh for then, so I need to try and force myself to eat if pos. Date. It's five to five to twelve now, local time. I've been riding for around about three and a half to four hours or so. My aim is to do six hundred kilometers to get down to the town of Caracas, pretty much bang in the middle of Spain. And if I can make it there, it means that I've got just one day more to get to the port of Tarifa, which is where I'll get the ferry over to Morocco. It was fairly cold and wet initially when I got off at Santander, but every hour that you go further south, it gets warmer and warmer. And now it's actually for the first time in, well, the whole day, I would actually class it as warm. I picked up in this little services, a potato and egg tart. They're extremely popular here. And 
I've got a green tea. And I think this will keep me going until probably about 3.30 is when I'm aiming to get into the town of Pedersez. But everything's going brilliantly. Beautiful motorways, no payages at all anywhere. Just stunning open scenery everywhere. I'm smashing through the miles at the moment. I think I've covered about 350 kilometers and just the final 250 to 300 left. So everything's going perfectly to plan. Now it's hot. 500 kilometers done today. Final 100 left. And it's now summer weather and summer gear weather. It's about 26 degrees or so. And it's the first time I've desperately needed a water. The motorway stopped, I think about an hour ago or so. And it's just been beautiful winding roads, passing through villages, mountains in the distance, perfect weather now. Oh, it's been glorious. I did embarrass myself uh, at the last cafe. These roadside cafes that are very popular and you always have a row of men sitting at the bar. And I, I went in and I said, uh, uno te verde, por favor. And the barman said, no, 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 sorry. We only speak Spanish. And I said, ah, that's okay. I speak Spanish. Te verde, por favor, green tea. Because I learned that in Tenerife. And he said, no, no, Spanish only. And this went on for about two minutes with everyone at the bar watching me. And I didn't know what to do because I was speaking as far as I knew Spanish. And then they said, well, look, write it down on a piece of paper here. So I wrote down Te Verde. And they're like, oh, green tea. I, I went bright red and just ran outside and drank my tea outside. That's what nine months Spanish lessons gets me. Can't even ask for a green tea in my best Spanish. Oh well.
I made it close to the heart of Caseras to a beautiful little apartment. I'll do a tour in a second, but this is 51 pounds a night. The heart of Caseras, old town is that way. It's a 2000 year old town founded by the Romans. So a huge amount of history. Just look at this beautiful balcony. You can see the tiny cobbled streets below. It's glorious. Okay, I'll flip the camera, show the apartment, and then I'm off to town to get a bit of food from a supermarket. I had to start on the ground floor just to show you all of the character. Beautiful old wooden door to the entrance. And then this mix of old and new, the exposed stonework on the right hand side, clay tiles with a rope on the right hand side. I think it's all been freshly done because it looks immaculate. And this is what you get in Caseras, Old Town, for £51 a night. Studio apartment, little kitchenette area, proper dining table, d dining table, sorry, Wi-Fi, sofa. Very cleverly done. Bathroom in there with a tiny window as well on the edge looking out to the street. cupboards and this really makes it so beautifully Spanish. A tiny little balcony with a few plants looking out onto the road just as the lorry comes as well. That is incredibly tight. I have no idea how he's doing that with so much confidence. After being in Bali for about two months and having no kitchen, I can't believe I'm saying it, but I almost got bored of eating out. Now it feels like such a treat to be able to cook at home. So I specifically looked for an apartment with a kitchenette because at the end of a long day's ride, I love living close enough or staying close enough to the village or town center where you can just walk into a supermarket, buy what you want, TV on, cook a bit of dinner. It's just the perfect way to unwind. Plus, I tried to stop eating these in Tenerife. The owner left me about six Madeleine cakes to get through and I've also got just the most gripping book, Snowing in Bali. For some reason, the only books I have any interest in reading are about drug dealers or gangsters. So that, if anyone's interested in a new book, is seriously good. Tomorrow's video will be, I think starting at 9 a.m. and my aim, I really, really want to get to the south coast, right near the port, which will head off to Morocco. So my aim, Spanish port by tomorrow evening. Thanks so much everyone for coming along. Oh, 
I'll see you in the next one.